What is it when you whisper into a mic? What's it called? ASMR. Welcome to Logan's ASMR Corner, where we're going to talk about the immense amount of pee breaks Brandon takes. Uh, he binge drinks energy drinks, and then he has to urinate all the time. So we're just sitting here. We're having a good time. Matt's looking at me a little weird. We have a special guest on ASMR Corner. It's Matt. How are you doing, Matt? Hey, really happy to be here. Did you bring some macaroni and cheese that we can stir? Into the mic, because people like that. Uh, no, but I do have something that can sound like macaroni in a pot. Okay, what you got? Just make the noise with your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I was, uh, I was not prepared for that, but I did not break my ASMR uh, voice. Because I know that you guys don't like loud noises, because this makes you feel safe and uh, calm. Yeah, uh... I don't get why people like ASMR. You know, different strokes for different folks. Makes me very uncomfortable. Uh, people like feet stuff, too, and I don't get that. Like what stuff? Feet stuff. Oh, feet stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that made an audible uh, discomfort face when I said feet stuff. I am uh, I am repulsed by feet. <laughs> it's feet, feet are gross. <laughs> it's really hard to stay at this stone, <laughs> especially when you're trying to roll them. <laughs> but uh, we do the hard things for you guys out there. Speaking of hard things, I hope you're enjoying this, Kyle. This has been Logan's ASMR Corner. Probably the first and last time this ever happened. We're going to get back to Brandon eventually after he shakes it probably more than twice. Godspeed, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the United States Paranormal Podcast. Sit down and buckle up for an enlightening ride through everything cryptid, creepy, and paranormal. Welcome back to the United States of Paranormal Podcast, your weekly road trip through the all things cryptid, creepy, and paranormal. This is Logan. This is Matt. Buzz. Nailed it in one shot there, ladies and gentlemen. A first. small applause. <laughs> I've done it before. This is uh, a very rare occurrence it, on this it show. Is, it is. Uh, I've been practicing in my head this whole time. I've been sitting at the table <laughs> <laughs> getting ready for it. So we're in the month of December. Uh, we've got Buzz presenting today. It's been our first time to do a case case in a hot minute because... Chiller filler before that, Snedecker part one and part two, the electric boogaloo. And before that, it was live show. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're so, just coming off the heels of plants, right? The yes, the plant. cryptid plants. The, oh, well, this episode will actually come out after whatever Jeremy's whatever presenting. fantastic next episode that the Boosters is putting out. Okay, so yeah, last time they did. I would say we could we look at had, the travel board, but no one uses that. We had the Kmart uh, Whomping Willow in that episode. We had uh, the Cactus Cat, which probably was just porcupines and drunk cowboys. Um, we had... There was an exploding one? Yeah, there was an exploding fruit. And then there was the tree that grew fleshlights, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking fuckable... Uh, I'm using the word fuckable right in the fucking opening five minutes of uh, (laughs) the show. Lady plants that people apparently sex up. So, I mean, people sex up everything else. Why not plants? That's fair. That's fair. They shouldn't, but they do. Hey, Brandon, how about we not tap things? Would that be cool? And we're also chastising people right when we open up the show. (laughs) Can we agree not to tap things? You know how many taps I took out of the last episode we did? I keep my hands below the desk. It because is otherwise I fidget. Uh, He's tapping the bottom of the desk. No, I'm tapping the chair. Oh. Trying to think if anything of worth talking about has happened since paranormal-wise or anything-wise. I can't think of anything cool that's... <laughs> he just fucking caught him with glare. He started yeah. tapping again. Matt looked at him like he's going to punch him in the dick. Uh, yeah, I don't think... I haven't caught any interesting... Uh, News. I've had a couple recommendations for movies to watch, but I haven't had an opportunity to sit and watch anything. That's been a consistent thing since the beginning of the I, I, I show. I want to get a group with, yeah. uh, to go see Violent Nights. I want to see that movie. Yeah, I'd like to try and go see it this week, actually. Um, I don't I don't get super enthused about watching stuff in theaters, but for the sake of this show, for the sake of this is supposed to be a really good Hallow- I'm not Halloween, a Christmas thing, and I just, I, I feel like I... I feel obligated to go see it, so I want to make a point to. Like it looks uh, like a fun movie, and I want to be able to talk about it. So I love. I need to go see I it. Love David Harbor, so 
I would go watch it just for him. He is fantastic. I he do love that man. Pretty, pretty fucking great. Uh, we had uh, Christopher write us about our last episode, and he said really nice things. I'd like to thank him for that. He didn't uh, have to lie if to I us. had more time, I would absolutely do a Power Ranger podcast. <laughs> but it, uh, I'm already scraping the bottom of the barrel as is. I would love to, and I, we appreciate your kind words and taking the time to message us. Maybe one day. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think if anything else has really happened. How's everybody's week been? Mine was fucking hectic. Oh, mine was horrible. My, as as you guys know, mine was my weekend was an absolute nightmare, uh, and it's all of my own making. What's the best kind of nightmare? Yeah. I uh, I was working a gig at some school, recording a, a small symphony, and uh, I the recorder I was using that had all the files for it, I left on the top of my roof of my car. And then drove off. So I drove two hours back home, realized what I did wrong, drove two hours back, looked around for it, bothered the local police department, bothered the campus security, and uh, then I proceeded to stop multiple times part of the way home because I saw black objects on the side of the road that I yeah, hoped could say, have been the case. Know that bitch probably rode on the top of your car until you hit the highway. Oh, it was heavy enough. It could have even potentially survived the whole trip. Not the whole trip, but a good portion of the trip. I finally gave up when I got to Bucky's, and I was like, "The Bucky's, the turn into Bucky's is the last place that this could have, on a slim hope, survived to." It's rough. And uh, once I got into Bucky's and talked to their management to go look in their lost and found, I uh, what does a Bucky's lost and found look like? Pretty- I didn't get to go into it. Oh, damn it. That would have been interesting yeah. to know. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. If anyone saw that and knew what it was. Well, at that point, it's probably fucked. Uh, no, actually. You think no, no, it was so all right? These things. That's a still case. Oh, fair. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> first of all, that thing was in a case if of it its own. it didn't get ran over. <laughs> well, no. I bet you these could survive getting ran over imagine somebody else might have had at just least. as bad as night as you because they caught one of those sort of fucking windshield driving <laughs> <laughs> i didn't think what about the fuck that is this? yeah i thought about that as well like the only thing that would be worse than not finding it would you be get finding it, back it. And getting sued yeah <laughs> your insurance it's like well, well you know where your 1200 dollars went yeah no it's uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. your 1200 dollar lost recorder became a fucking fifteen thousand dollar lawsuit oh, because you murdered this. somebody yeah. Yeah. So now we're recording on a smaller version of that recorder, uh, which is fine. It doesn't hurt our podcast any at all. It just hurts mostly my pride. Uh, wallet? Well, thankfully, it wasn't mine. So, no, it doesn't hurt my wallet. Well, no, I'll admit the lost money on the gig. No, oh, yeah, there is that. Yeah, I, that did, does I am losing money on the gig, unfortunately. That was uh, a uh, And loss. who knows? Maybe I'll get fired for losing it because it was my jobs. Uh, <laughs> Doubtful, but uh, I get to go to my boss's office tomorrow and say, "Hey, boss, I messed up." See, I what, made. What you do is just like <laughs> what you need to do is go in there and just like have a meeting about something else, and it's on your way out. Oh yeah, by the way, I lost this thousand dollar recorder. Bye. Yeah, so tomorrow's not going to be fun for me either. But hopefully, once that's said and done, and once I deal with um, letting down the client. Uh, I can move on. Well, hope, have you had a chance to check the recording from the cameras yet? No. I'm waiting for the camera guy to send that to me. Once he sends it to me, I will be able to gauge that. You know the best thing about the camera guy is we know for a fact that he does not listen to the show. So we can just lean in the mic and be like, hey, Dakota, how are you doing? I know you're not listening to this. I hope you're having a fucking horrible day. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> And now we'll know when he does listen to it because he'll write me back. So we'll probably hear from him in like a year and a half. Uh, yeah. The best case of him hearing it would probably be his work buddy listening to it yeah. and <laughs> telling him about it. What about you, Brandon? <sighs> well, I have had bad luck the past couple weeks. God, this is just a lovely go around yeah. the table. <laughs> Starter went out on my car in um, the middle of a shell parking lot. And so, you know, that was a nine o'clock crawling under a dark car, trying to fix. And that involved Matt, too. Yeah, that involved Matt. I mean, listen, I just provided tools and a little bit of knowledge. You had to drive out there, though. Yeah, I did have to drive out there, but that's fine. I'd I'd much rather be inconvenienced and annoyed that I'm inconvenienced than knowing that somebody is sitting for hours screwed. 
Yeah, fair. I mean, at least if somebody you relatively like. Yeah, like I'm not annoyed at people for that type of stuff. I'm just annoyed at the situation. But I would be, I would feel like shit if I said no, and then found out that they were just fucked the whole night, or they spent right. hundreds hundred of dollars on like a tow truck Find or something. Out Brandon's been fucking uh, was it human trafficked? <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's weird. That guy you see in the back of the CNN report about illegal immigrants looks awful lot like Brandon. <laughs> uh, so that happened. Then I had to replace uh, my two front tires on my car because the tires went bad. So that was fine. And then the blower motor for my AC went out. And like, I know of people that are listening in any part of the world that has normal climate. They're like, oh, that's fine, though. It's winter. You don't need your AC right now. Let no, me not- fucking <laughs> tell you. <laughs> There's a segue I was aiming for. Okay, the first night, my house got up to 85 degrees. And so... The second night, it dropped down to 52. You know, the beautiful part about this is... Um, I'm where he was getting his parts from and everything, and I was fully expecting him to come in Friday to come get that blower motor, you know, and everything. But he was like, nah... It was 50 something degrees outside. I can wait. (laughs) And then the the next next night night rolls around and it's Texas is like, yo, dog, that 52 degrees was nice, right? And Brand's like, yeah. It's like, that'd be a shame if it was 85 degrees tonight. And Brand's like, yeah. (laughs) So he was bitching in Discord about sweating. Yeah. No, as we've learned, (laughs) as we fucks us like us, that is the theme of this week. Oh, yeah. Like, and this is like, especially this part of Texas, really, probably most places in Texas are. In this weird, like, area. Southeast of Texas. Yeah. Um, The weather will change. The temperature will change drastically and on a dime. Did we talk about RenFest any? We did, but I just want want to clarify. I just want to reiterate. Like, now, normally when we go, we go, like, the same time every year. Yeah. At, like, uh, the the ass end of November, or ass end of, yeah, no, the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically, the first week of November, we always go. We camp. And usually, last year, we went. It was so fucking cold, it was uncomfortable to sleep. So this year, everybody was like, fuck it, we're buying two people sleeping bags and this and this, we're going to be ready for it. And the first day we get there, it is the warmest it had ever been when we were there. We're all worried about it at night because it's like 80 degrees outside, we're sweating, it's humid, everybody's dreaded going to sleep. We're up, it's probably like 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, it was like 11 when that Oh, no, it was like around 11. We're all chilling outside, we're all a little drunk and everything. And you just hear a pitch... In the in the fucking the whole fucking like atmosphere, just like something shifts, and you're like, "What the fuck is that?" The trees just blew over, and then all of a sudden, this wind that is Ugh. fucking cold as shit just hits you, and it <laughs> it was a fucking hard wind too. And then the temperature dropped like 18 degrees instantly. It felt so nice outside, yeah, and it, everybody was like, "Fuck, I'll be able to sleep tonight." And it was yeah, just it went from being humid and unpleasant. To people putting on layers. Yeah. Like, people instantly were like, oh, I need to go get my uh, long sleeve shirt. And I was like, fuck, this is nice. Yeah. And that's that's and I, that's and probably the first time I've ever seen that dramatic of a shift happen That was instantly. an event. <laughs> I've gone into work or into school when I was younger and then come outside, and it was cooler than what it was when I came in, but I've never had a wall of temperature change. Yeah, it was so fucking drastic. It was fucking gnarly, but it was appreciated. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Normally, we expect things to shift for the worst. That was the first time I think it's ever just changed for the best. Yeah, it was nice. But yeah, here this whole week, it's been like one day it'll be like 50, and the next day it's 80-something. Or you need a jacket in the morning, and then by the time you're leaving work, you don't want that jacket anywhere near you. Oh, yeah. And Brandon made life choices based on that. Like a fucking rookie. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I should be fine. It shouldn't get that Yeah, hot. no. In this area, if anything oh, goes wrong with your Lord. AC, you should be trying to fix that same day if you can. The only thing that you can really put off here is fixing your heater. Yeah. You can roll the dice. You'd be like, well, tomorrow will probably be 80 degrees. Well, it, it doesn't, it's not like the north, like where it gets in the negatives. It's not like we're in northern Indiana where it gets like, down to zero. Well, You're not going to well, freeze And I for prefer the most it to be cold. If it's 50, it's like, okay, I'll just put on yeah. a like, clothes. I'm comfortable yeah. in the house. Barring the occasional freakish weather event, you're not going to freeze to death. Here. In Texas. Like I said, it's not like northern Indiana where it gets below zero and you're just like, if my heater goes out, I might die. Yeah. Here, you'll just be like, I'll be a little cold, but it'll be fine. Yeah, here it can be Christmas and you have to worry about heat strokes. Yeah. So, 
Like I said, the moral of the story this week is uh, nobody fucks us like us. By me, it's just acts of God. Well, no, you boned yourself, sir. I was expecting you all Friday to come get that blower motor, and I didn't hear dick from you, and I knew exactly what was going on, too. I was like, he was like, I was like, he was like, you could put it off an extra day. And regret. And of course, it's the weekend, so yeah. that extra day turns into... See, again, that's one of those things, like, I would never put off something like my AC. I do have things that go bad at my house that I do put off, like the door to my office. Yeah, and I'm not talking about me putting off. Yeah, I fucked myself there. I'm talking more about... <laughs> at least he made it. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about more of the fact that... that I had two vehicle issues and my AC going out all within a week of each other. Yeah, right now. So my office has a pocket door. I hate that it has a pocket door, but it does. But I accidentally kicked the door one day and it knocked the back of the door off the track. And then as I was trying to fix it, I ended up dropping the uh, the wheel thing deep inside. Like it's on the floor deep inside the door. So now I can't grab it. I have to take the door frame apart. In order to fix it. And uh, I'm just like, oh, I'll wait. I'll, I'm just going to keep putting it off. Yeah, but you have kids. In a couple of weeks, I'll worry about it when I'm not. The uh, only thing I put off in my house and I finally resolved it is cleaning my fucking oven. That is the only thing I put off. We're not going to talk about like, cleaning the ovens, We're not talking about cleaning the ovens. And I finally did it. But like, I like to cook my pizzas and stuff on the rack directly. Uh-huh. So the bottom of my oven gets pretty fucky. Uh, okay. About, yeah. Well, I mean, that's how you. I was about it. to ask about that because very rarely does my oven get gross. My, I will cook if I can. I'll cook something on the rack: garlic bread, pizza. I like yeah, to put I mean, that's the best the way to do. It. Okay. Yeah. Well, have you thought about leaving a pan on the bottom rack? But as then that's going to cut pan? off the heat source from yeah. hitting it directly. So unless I might as well just doing, sit in the pan in the first unless place. Unless he's unless he's do, putting it on a boiler setting, it will no. mess with. Uh, yeah, that's why I do it so it gets directly from the heat source in the first place. So if I'm going to put a pan underneath it, I might as well just put it on a pan. Fair I point, just don't do point. it. But I, I cleaned it the other day because one, like, it now got it got to the point where anytime I kicked on the oven, Essie would be like, "Is that?" She's like, "We we having pizza?" And I'm like, <laughs> "No, the oven's just on." <laughs> so I scraped it all out the other day. Oh, but yeah. outside of that, man, those people that like to, if they ever come back, to like to drop us the reviews about being like, "It's just guys talking about their day." <laughs> Fuck those guys. If you're still here listening, how's it going? You enjoying this? Us talking about our fucking week and me cleaning my oven? <laughs> yeah, maybe take a little interest in our lives, okay? So we we need take a place interest to in vent. yours. We need it. We yeah. need to talk you to. Wanna, listen, if you want to email us and vent to us about your day and the week you've had, well, listen, feel free to email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. Well, listen, I won't even go review you wherever I can review you and say nasty things. I'll just say hi. I hope your day gets better. Have you cleaned your oven? Yeah. You're having car trouble? You need to replace your starter? I can walk you through it. I don't need to be called out of my oven. Okay. <laughs> I bet yours is fucking. <laughs> it's, it's a fucking fire risk right now. No, it's not. <laughs> it would, if um, I go to your house and turn on your oven, is my daughter gonna think we're cooking a fucking pizza? <laughs> yeah. No. See, my biggest problem. I don't use my oven that much. My okay. biggest problem, like my kid today, wanted to draw with his colored pencils. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And then he takes the bag, which is this bag full of colored pencils, and he dumps it all out in the floor. <laughs> So we spent about 20 minutes picking up all of his pencils, and then as soon as I set the bag down, he dumped it all right back out, and then we had to clean it all up again. That's fair. That's fair. Right now, Bean Dip is basically a domestic terrorist, so I've never had a kid that literally just gets mad and screams out of all my kids, but this one gets mad and gets mad mad. No, oh, wow. Well, my kid just gets upset and screams. Yeah. Yeah, your kid's loud. Kids, well, kids are, loud are loud in general. Yeah. <laughs> That being said, Brandon's got the spooky. This I don't even know what he's talking about. All I know is he said is it's a long one. Yep. So. Yep. So I was a little bit inspired by Kanye and decided to go to Germany the, this week. Ah, uh, so, you should never be inspired by Kanye. Not not current Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Kanye needs help. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He also needs a social media manager. And a manager that has a kill switch to any microphone on any show that he ever goes on ever again. The moment Kanye says, you know how I feel about Hitler? And just hit that fucking button and yeah. kill the feed. You know, what, you know what bothered me the most about that? He said Hitler designed his microphone. I'm like, no, Hitler didn't design your microphone. That was Neumann, who was not a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The Nazi party did design uh, the VW, though. You, that's a fucking them. good car, though. It is. It is. And he did make highways. Let's not go into what <laughs> the Nazis have done. No, no, the point with. is, horrible people do do some good things. Unfortunately. 
That's no, that's that's not unfortunate. No, no, that's not no it's unfortunately that you have to give them the merit of like yeah. they did make the Volkswagen. That though it'd be nice if you could just yeah. be like they were all around garbage humans. That doesn't mean that doesn't excuse they aren't behavior. fucking monsters. Yeah. If you ever have a thought to where you're like, well, Hitler did do, just kill it, <laughs> kill the thought, squash it, let it die inside your brain. Don't let it air out. <laughs> just just let it die up there. <laughs> I wonder how. Every time one article like that pops up, I wonder how Kim Kardashian feels. She's like the best world. Yeah, well, but you got to think, though. She gets that big money from him now. They've ruled out what she gets. Yeah. Anytime he does something like that, that's a little less money going to his bank maybe account. That's so maybe why she's like, doing mm. it. Maybe this is all a smite ploy to tank his net worth just so he doesn't have to pay her. No, this is not taking your meds. Yeah. <laughs> mental this- health is serious. Men's mental health is serious. Unfortunately, uh, celebrities have the uh, not-so-great benefit of when they start to come undone, uh, everybody's watching. So, right, Speaking about mental health, this is actually a good story for talking about that. Have uh, either of you heard of Anna Louise uh, Michelle? I've heard of the name Anna Louise is very familiar. I've heard of Sarah Michelle Geller. Buffy and Daphne. Yeah. And she yeah. was in, uh, what that? The Romero, uh, Romero Call of Duty Zombies. DLC. Yes, yeah, she was. Oh, that's my. That's still my favorite map. And again, the grudge. I've never watched the grudge. I never did. A yeah. bunch of those uh, horror movies came out around that time. They just weren't for me. I didn't watch the grudge. I didn't watch the ring. I just right. didn't really give a shit. Well, so the yeah. case of uh, Anna Louise, she is a. Uh, her story directly inspired the exorcism of Emily Rose. I fucking love that uh, movie. That is one of. That is in my top three mm-hmm. exorcism movies. That's a good ass flick. And there's also inspired Requiem and uh, Anna Louise, the Exorcist tapes. Okay. So okay. three big movies. One of those I've heard of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Exorcist of Emily Rose. Like that's like that's one a, of that's the. A fucking, that's a good flick. Yeah. Add that to the list of things we sell or watch together and never do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like episode three of Haunting on Hill House. Oh man, we're going to watch the fuck out of this show. Fucking 37 episodes in and be like, that one episode we watched was pretty good, guys. <laughs> um, we watched two. We did. How much of it do you remember, Brandon? You were high fuck, as fuck. I was stoned. <laughs> Listen, Logan, Logan, if you would get like a second screen or something set up, we could watch this stuff over Discord while we're playing video games. Oh, no, you guys got to focus while you're watching some of these things. You definitely have to focus uh, yeah. while watching Hill House. Well, then we can just not play games Nothing some but, night. I'm going to call out my coworkers right here, right now. I know they both listen. Uh, Sid, Doug, I stopped watching movies with you guys because I want to strangle you when I see you watching a flick that I like and you're both just looking at your phones and not even looking at the screen. It makes me want to murder you. So I'm just letting you know. I'm just calling you out there. You'll have a nice day. Uh, if you're sitting next to me, just wave at me. I'll talk to you later. Okay, can you get back to it? <laughs> Look, huh? listen, listen, listen. Mm-hmm. I know I, we're, we're, I'm putting off us getting to the story, but let's just take a night of the week. Do it like a date night. And even if it's not an in-person thing, let's just watch something over Discord. I think the last thing we watched over a Discord thing was that fucking... Uh, it, it was uh, uh, oh, Repo, the genetic opera. Yeah, fuck everybody for making me watch that. <laughs> the only good part about that movie was Giles from Buffy singing, like, because that man is a fucking Michael magician. Michael Anthony's head is incredible. Yeah, Love everything that else movie. can go fuck itself. Fucking My Chemical Romance, the fucking opera. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> Oh, Paris Hilton was all right. Hey, you know what? No, I fucking love Paris Hilton. Anybody that's got anything to say about that woman can go fuck themselves. She does a really good job. She was, one, she was awesome in uh, the remake of uh, House of Wax. I fucking love that movie. Mm -hmm. She killed it. That scene where she catches the piece of metal through the ground through her foot makes me cringe every fucking time. And that chick screams like she really got stabbed. Two, she's smart as fuck. Three, Plastic surgery or not, she, this, she looks the goddamn same right now. We just started watching her. She has a cooking show on Netflix. Uh-huh. I, I think use I've seen the an term episode of that. cooking show very lightly because Homegirl's trying to learn how to cook via making. She made her own little cookbook out of recipes she sees online. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a nightmare watching her cook, but it's hilarious. And she did this. Uh, she did this documentary, and the voice that she talks in that that uh, us hot voice mm-hmm. is a voice she does purposely. Oh, yeah. Because in that show, she starts to get a little drunk in one episode, and she'll cut out of that voice every now and then when she's talking to somebody, and it gets a lot deeper, and you're like, hold up now. She's like, yeah, that's all right. And then you're just like, (laughs) god damn. 
I looked at Kayla and I was like, man, that, that one deep voice is oddly attractive on her. But she, she like I said, she's cool. Fuck, she knows her brand. And I think when she's in stuff, she does like, she, she gets the criticism about her. She's cool with it. Yeah, she does. She's yeah, good she at does. making fun of herself. I think of that episode of Supernatural. Oh, that yeah, she was yeah, in. yeah. Like she's, she's really good at making, at poking fun at herself. Uh, because she knows, like, she she's made her, I mean, she's made money from her family, but she's she made, her she made her own. brand via this character that she's yeah. portrayed. And Paris, it's I know, a lot more honest than I'd say Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. Paris, I know you're listening. Uh, just do this for me. Stop using bedazzled spatulas while you cook. That's just not safe for anybody. I saw stuff come off that spatula while you're cooking. I don't want you choking on rhinestones. I'm just I'm just looking out for you. But I do appreciate celebrities can make fun of themselves. Like the ones oh, like yeah. Snooki, uh, when they did that episode about her in South Park, she got on there and she tweeted out. She was like, Snooki, one snoo snoo. <laughs> 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 like people that can appreciate that, I love. People take that shit too seriously. Like that guy from the band, the one that got pissy when they were did the fucking headstrong, I'll suck off anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then he opted on there and got all pissy. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, that, that guy's a fucking knob. <laughs> yeah, or like right now with Twitter, uh, where they said comedy was finally legal on Twitter, and now Elon Musk bans anybody that makes fun of him. Well, I fucking <laughs> love that Doja Cat fucking played Elon on Twitter. Her name was locked because they're doing all that shit, and she had her yeah. name as Christmas. And she was like, Elon, please, I don't want to be stuck as Christmas. Can I change my name? And she, he, he was like, he fucking changed it to where yeah. she could. She changed it to Elon Musk and made her picture him and then fucking <laughs> tweeted him back like, thanks, bro. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you just got, you you claim to be the smartest motherfucker out there and you got played by Doja Cat. Yeah. Fucking sit the fuck down. <laughs> I wonder what he did to her after that, too. Like, he got in there and changed her name to Doja Cat and locked her profile picture or something. Who knows? Fuck that silly bastard. I imagine he didn't because I imagine he can't. I imagine that's a huge privacy issue. Yeah, well, if, like, if anybody's gonna service. fuck up privacy issues, it would be fucking Elon Musk. And I don't have to worry about him because I don't have a Tesla that he can fucking shut off with the remote. So yeah. get fucked. <laughs> that's a non-poor person problem. You can't get my Tesla because I ain't got one, Elon. Man, man, I'm like going to rant about Teslas, but you don't want a Tesla anyway. I can hear somebody typing into the fucking reviews right now. These guys never talk. That's fun. Yeah. It, oh yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you want a Tesla, spend some time on YouTube and watch videos from people who have bought Teslas, and you'll stop wanting to buy a Tesla. Now, Matt was obsessed with Tesla for like an entire year. Oh, yeah. And then he actually looked into it. He's like, oh. Well, hell. yeah. Well, I mean, video content started becoming more prominent via like TikTok and via on YouTube, like more people posting personal stuff on YouTube as opposed to just YouTube channels. And, uh, People started posting like their experiences with their Teslas, and like everybody. None had, of like, it was good. Yeah, it's just the worst quality control. Well, not to mention the amount of nutbags that it just makes you a target for when you get one. You saw that news report that fucking twenty twenty did about people just walking by and vandalizing the fuck out of Teslas. No, and that's why Tesla started putting those cameras on the fucking side mirrors because like people like to get anything replaced on a Tesla. It's expensive as shit. Yeah. And, like, they started showing this footage because they put those cameras on both side mirrors. Mm -hmm. And they started showing, like, they just did a montage of footage of people, of Tesla owners' cars being parked in, like, Walmart parking lots and shit. And the amount of, like, adults that are in, like, their 50s or, or like, late 40s yeah. just walking up to Teslas and breaking the mirrors or fucking keying them. It was fucking insane. Wow. They're just fucking dragging their keys across or breaking the fucking mirrors. And it's just like, it is an active thing that is constantly happening. People just vandalizing Teslas because they're Teslas. Jeez. And it's like, it sucks because, you know, anything on a Tesla fucking is going to cost you a fuck ton. Yeah, well, plus you have, you, you have to have the car shipped off somewhere. So they have to come and pick it up on a tow truck and then bring it to wherever it is they're going to work on it. You can't drop it off at a place to get it fixed. Yeah, it's fucking... But we digress, Brandon. Yeah. And we'll let you get back Sorry, to our thing. actual story. Yeah, yeah, okay. No segue? Well, uh, I mean, now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Anna Louise, she was born in September 21st, 1952 in West Germany. Born and raised on the playground is where yeah. she spent most of her days. She was day. baptized the next day, uh, and she was born into a Roman Catholic family. All right, her parents were Joseph and Anna, and they own a small sawmill in Klingenberg. Klingenberg. Only one person would maybe know where that is. 
Dude, I don't even know what area of Germany I lived at at this point. I know I know all the places I was near. I lived in Bad Nauheim. I lived near Freiburg, Gießen. We were, it was a smaller area. I basically, I think every base that I lived on or went to while I was in Germany is now closed. So it was nice though. I mean, I wish I would have been older to appreciate it more, but yeah. Yeah, it was good stuff. All right. Well, she was born into a family of five daughters. Unfortunately, the oldest died at the age of eight due to complications from having her one of her kidneys removed, leaving Anna Louise to be the oldest of the surviving sisters. Um, both of the parents worked at the sawmill that they own, leaving the grandmother to raise uh, all the sisters together. Or as Germans call them, Oma. All right. This was a... Interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Oma? Oma. Yeah. Oma. They, they were a very religious family. They attended mass twice a week. Um, as a young child, Anna Louise was constantly sick from like one to five. Within five years, she caught mumps, measles, and scarlet fever. I don't even know what mumps is. I've heard it, but it sounds awful. Yeah. Just the name, mumps. Yeah. He got the mumps. Yeah. Um... The fuck were they doing? Rolling her around in a fucking hospital trash can down the fucking God. regular? Oh, just wait. When does when what what era was this based around? Like what time? So this is the fifties right now. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Everybody had everything around. Yeah, yeah. It's more understandable. Yeah. So people didn't wash their hands in the fifties. So the main part of our story basically starts around her sixteenth birthday in nineteen sixty eight. While she was sitting next to her friend while in class, she just lost consciousness for a brief moment. Like, one moment she was on, next moment she was off. That's normal. I lost consciousness in class all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, my, this was, this girl, like, her mother was, like, she always doted on her so that she was a great student. She was planning on being a teacher. So, like, she was always good in school. So, this wasn't like you where she turned off because she wasn't paying attention. It's fair. <laughs> I um, legitimately picked out my backpack because it had enough padding in the back for me to sleep on. So. I've had somebody pass out in class before. Not not in one of my classes now that I teach, but uh, when I was in high school, I was in a class and uh, somebody passed out in the middle of class. Just wood? Just like hit the desk? Uh, well, you know, they didn't go down. They more went back and then like slumped into the floor. Oh, they just did a slide. That's fair. Yeah, it was... A, it was oh, that's trippy. Very disconcerting. Apparently that same night... Uh, she woke up and was basically, she had sleep paralysis. Like she couldn't move or speak or anything. And she peed the bed that night. Went to I do mom. that too. <laughs> We're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to graze on past that. Yeah. Apparently she went to go tell her mom because she was terrified about the situation. Her mom just kind of blew it off. I'm not changing your sheets. Do it yourself. Yeah. Well, the next year, it happened again. Same thing. There was a brief blackout in the middle of the day. She was paralyzed at night. And when they finally took her to her family doctor, uh, the doctor recommended her to go see a neurologist. Uh, the, so they went to go see a Dr. Luthi. And Luthi. she was diagnosed with a temporal lobe epilepsy. Ooh. This family's got a tough fucking break. Of fucking... Yeah. Oof. Oh, yeah. Well... Uh, they did, he didn't prescribe her any medicine because, of course, they, she only had two incidences in a year, right? So she went back to school, and, of course, that she started developing more health problems. She had to have her tonsils removed. She got contracted. Uh, Let's leave you this clear at this point. Like, isn't he, when are we going to evolve as humans just for fucking soon as, you know, you, like, instead of just, like, being born and then fucking snipping your belly button and everything... They also just reach in there and just pull the fucking tonsils out right from the get-go, you know? Well, I mean, not everybody needs their tonsils removed. But clearly, we don't need them to fucking exist. Right. And they just end up being a problem, so just fucking pluck them out. So, I mean, do you want to undergo a surgical procedure for everything that you don't need? Sure. Fucking what else do we don't need in there, Brandon? Your appendix? All right, fucking take it. <laughs> like, all right. with the That's a nice new baby. Let's go. Let's pop those tonsils out and let's uh let's get that appendix. Yeah, let's go ahead and do an appendix side <laughs> on a top. No, leave the appendix. Fuck it. If explode, you die. It's whatever. Just get rid of the fucking tonsils. Yeah. Appendectomy. Appendectomy. Appendicitis right. is what you get that yeah, makes yeah. you have to get an appendectomy. Yeah. You're right. Fuck You're tonsils. right. I mean, I still have mine, but like, fuck them. Yeah. Get rid of them. So let's again, them she out. had <laughs> to have her tonsils removed, and then she contracted something called uh, pleurisy and pneumonia. Pleurisy is apparently a thing where the like uh, the connecting tissue on your lungs to the rest of your body gets inflamed. 
And she had that on top of pneumonia. Jesus fuck. I'm sure one led to the other. Fucking lungs are fickle bitches. Once something happens, it's just the rest of it's just like. <laughs> yeah, she was then moved into a hospital in January. Fucking should have moved her into a goddamn bubble. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next month, they moved her to a specialty hospital. Yeah, the bubble wasn't developed until the 1960s. Well, Till then, bubbles didn't exist. Good God. Yeah. During this, uh, she started becoming more religious because throughout this entire process, she just went deeper and deeper into Catholicism. And st- she started thinking instead of being a school teacher, she wanted to be like a religious teacher. Let's be fair. She was probably just bargaining with God at that point. Like, <laughs> listen, I know I was going to teach math, but if I teach, I don't know, Bible school, can you hop off my dick for a second? Because it's been rough. <laughs> yeah. In that June, she started having seizures, and she was prescribed an anti-convulsant. Uh, Convulsant, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so then while staying in the clinic, she started saying that she was seeing ghastly demonic faces. And she would smell a terrible stench oh. that was like burning fecal matter. Oh, you got that, ah. you got that, you got that sulfur... <laughs> They got sulfur in they there. They did say sulfur. She, the, the quote was burning. Oh, I guess fecal. sulfur smells more like burnt egg type. Yeah, this smell, was like raw yeah. egg. Yeah, this was burnt ass. Burnt shit. <laughs> burnt ass. Uh, I can't, Lord. At that point, you got it. Like, if you're religious, do you automatically pivot to like, well, clearly God isn't listening, but somebody else is. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, this. Because this is going on, it started making her depressed, withdrawn. Well, yeah, I'd be sad too if I smelled burnt shit she, on the regular. So she was in hot. She she was admitted to the hospital in January. She didn't get out until August. So that was yeah, yeah about ten months. Yeah, that sucks. Eight months. I don't oh, know. I thought you said January to. Uh, sorry, I said yeah. I thought you said October. That's my bad. January to August. I don't know if I could handle a few days in the hospital, let alone months. Yeah. Especially a 1950s hospital. You don't oh, even yeah. have fucking daytime television to watch up in that bitch. They're just looking for an excuse to perform a lobotomy. Yeah. yeah. I, at this point, they said when she got got out, they said her personality changed, which, of course, she was in the fucking hospital for eight months seeing demons. And smelling burnt gas. shit. And then cu- not saying anything about it because there's a doctor over there with a fucking ice pick just waxing it like, you say you smell burnt shit? No. No, I'm all right. I'm good. Yeah, she said she was reluctant to go back to school and her grades suffered because of it. And yeah. again, this was a girl who was like excelled in school and was right. So whenever so when she finally went back, she started having more moments of like brief unconsciousness and body st- stiffness. And uh that's when she had another seizure, uh major seizure back in uh, June of the next year. Which led up to another visit to the neurologist. They ran more tests. They couldn't find anything. So they gave her more medicine. And after some more periods of unconsciousness and body stiffness within the next year, uh, she stopped having the seizures. So it seemed like it was slowly going away. Uh, Finally, so during this time when she was having these problems with the faces and the smell and all, she didn't tell anyone. Well, no, it's the 1950s. You don't tell people you're having mental issues she, when you're a woman. Yeah, she didn't even tell her parents. No, you don't. That's how you catch a lobotomy. It legitimately, any do any person with a penis can just be be like, yeah, I think she's a nutbag, and they'll throw you into a oh. fucking silo back then. So. Well, she finally told her parents about the faces and the smell, and then she was, because she also started hearing voices telling her that she was damned to hell. I'm inclined to believe it at that point if it's happening to me. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And then one day her mother claimed that she saw her daughter standing in front of a statue of the Virgin Mary, just hatefully looking at it with her eyes jet black. The jet black part's a little spooky, but I mean, I couldn't fault her it's for sick. just glaring at Mother Mary after being fucked for like two years straight. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, but also, she said, the mother claimed that she saw claws on her daughter, like her hands were claws. Ooh, okay. The old jet black eyes. Neat. Yeah. Then, after this, can you guess what disease she caught? Oh, God. This is the least fun game ever. <laughs> Tuberculosis? <laughs> measles. German measles. Is there a difference between regular measles and German measles? It just said German measles. There's a joke that can be made here. We're not going to go into that. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, I gotta know. I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> I'm gonna look up German measles. Rubella, also known as German measles, is an infection by the rubella virus. Rubola? Is it even measles? Often referred to simply as measles, is an infection by a virus in the Paramyxoviridae family. Both are highly contagious, uh, contagious airborne viruses. Okay, all right. Here's the real answer. The name rubella is derived from Latin, meaning little red. Rubella was initially considered to be a variant of measles or scarlet fever. It was not until 1814 that it was first described as a separate disease in the German medical literature, henceforth the common name German measles. So, it was thought to be either a form of measles or scarlet fever, but it wasn't. So they just started calling it German measles to make it more confusing for everyone else. Instead of giving it its own name. Yeah, instead of giving it its own name. Okay. Well, I guess rubella is its own name. Okay. Well, so there. That's we digress. The There's that. The more segment. you know. Yeah. So apparently she caught measles, scarlet fever, and German measles. I'm beginning to believe that she is damned. I mean, that's pretty. Uh, it's pretty believable at this point. I yeah. She probably feels like she is. So, uh, despite missing all this school, she was actually able to graduate in 1973. Good for her. Yeah. Yep, yep. She went to go see a psychiatrist, and he she was telling him that uh, she was having some suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. And I bet so, with all yeah, those fucking no problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, the medicine she had for her mental... So, they put her on mood stabilizers and antidepressants. None it's crazy it to think about they had that shit in the 50s. Well, this is 70s now. Okay, got goo. Yeah, there's some time has passed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because she's 16. She was born in 52. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. and she just graduated high school. So so after this, you know, the medicine wasn't helping with her mood or anything. But uh, one incident finally made the family think she was possessed. Uh, they tried to go not to... Not the black eyes thing? Oh, yeah. Not, well, that was just the mother. That's that was just the guy's That's fine. She <laughs> didn't talk about it either because she didn't really get put yeah. in a loony bin. <laughs> Uh, but they went to go see a shrine of the Virgin Mary at some temple. And as they were going there, she said that she couldn't enter the shrine grounds, the temple grounds, because the ground felt like it was on fire. Ooh. And she couldn't look at any holy pictures or sacramentals, and the holy water smelled bad to her. She is damned. Yep, no, nope, no, nope, those are all red flags. They yep. were so the fam- so a friend of the family suggested they go see a priest for a consultation. And the first priest they went to visit said that she seemed like a normal girl. She was sh- shy, but he didn't suspect of there being any sort of possession. So then they went to go see another priest uh, who basically, uh, they had a series of meetings with him and he didn't do anything. And then, but... A third priest who sat down during the first two, uh, the, the first couple priests, finds like, you know what, we need to get you to meet a father, Ernst Ost. Bless you. I know, it's a weird fucking it. name. So, before Alts even met the girl, all right, uh, the second priest who went to tell Alts about her in the first place, uh, Alts claimed that when he was being told about her, he basically had a revelation and he could describe the entire family in his head. And he would talk, and he said that he could see some sort of radiation coming from Anna Louise's head, in his head, right? Um, he, two days later, he received letters from her and her mother, but he said he couldn't read the letters because he felt nauseous being near them. So there was some kind of negative energy from the letters coming from the family. And then that night at a mass, he claimed that he was hit with a great force. And smelled something burning. Smelled and like that shit. a negative fire. force was surrounding him. Uh, later, when this all came into court, a psychiatrist said that these were probably pseudo hallucinations and that father uh, all suffered from. Well, that's a little bit of a spoiler alert there when it came to court. So we know this yeah. isn't going to end well. <laughs> yeah. We glimpsed the future there, folks. It's not ending well for somebody. Poor shadows. <laughs> all right. So. Father Alts did become interested in the case, and after several weeks, he met the girl at the university she started studying at, which was at Wusberg University, because she was uh, studying education and religious studies. Out of curiosity, did you spend time looking up the pronunciations of any of this stuff, or are you just winging the pronunciations? I know, it's pronounced Wusberg. 
I took oh. phonetics classes. Yeah, oh, he's educated. Sorry, you've Give taken fuck. phonetics. So if you'd like to dispute anything that Brandon has pronounced, feel free to email us at the United States at gmail.com. The United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. I there apologize. You go, there you, go. you You can bra- blame it on my education at Lamar. You know, if I get hit by any of those things that that priest got hit by, I would not be going out of my way to find said person. I'd be going out of my way to stay the fuck away from right? that person. But, oh. you know, whatever. To each their own. Yeah. Fucking religious people. While she was in school, she, like I said, she was studying education and theology. Um, she Who was has ta- She was taking her medications and would visit Father Alts every two weeks. Um, she was still experiencing depression, and she was seeing the demonic faces constantly. Uh, in November of 73, she developed a relationship with a young boy named Peter. And after several weeks of dating... Peter uh, or Pierre? Peter. Oh, Peter. You said Peter. I did not hear Peter. I heard Peter. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, get your ears checked. Maybe I'm the one who needs a lobotomy. <laughs> Uh, after several weeks of dating, she tried to break up with him, saying that she didn't, just couldn't feel the same kind of feelings he had. And uh, he took her to a doctor. He collected Yeah, because stamps. they can do that. <laughs> yeah, because they can do that. <laughs> Looking back at the, especially in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't like me the same? Lobotomy. So let's get you checked out. Yep. And uh, the doctor diagnosed her with a neurosis and referred her to another clinic. He, he, he's an attractive young man. Clearly, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy. He has a lot to offer. <laughs> yep. A test at the clinic did show abnormalities in her brain, and she was prescribed yet more medication. That guy just justified there. He's like, see, there is something wrong with her brain. I'm a fucking catch. Right? So- <laughs> <laughs> this isn't an exorcism. This is just shitty dudes. <laughs> oh, just wait. Oh, it's oh, going to get better. <laughs> Uh, so her depression and visions kept popping up erratically just at random times. And Father Alts told her that she needed to be more religious in her life and have a more religious lifestyle. She's going to school for religious studies. Hop off her jock. Yep. She started having severe headaches. She complained of slow reflexes, fatigue, and would have like half the one side of her body would have paralysis. Fuck. And in September of 74, her depression just became constant. Father Alt believed more and more of demonic possession, and he sent a request to his supervisor to do an exorcism and in secret, because this, of course, is the 70s. The Catholic Church already took it. Yeah, they're trying to step away from it more and more. Now, at this time, the request was denied, because, again, the Catholic Church was like, no, we don't need a media storm on this. Uh, And so... She so then that didn't happen. So she would start losing her appetite and would stay in bed for days at a time. Uh, Account of you know depression. Mm -hmm. Uh, And of course, this is just one of the silliest things you could do. She then added a third major to her degree in music. So it's it's now theology, education, and music. And you know anyone who would tell you that they got a degree in music will tell you that is absolute hell. It is like that is a hard course load. Uh, and so she began to start losing control of herself and would get violent. She would start throwing things at Peter. She would start throwing things at her friends. Uh, and then she believed that she was just condemned to hell. Oh, fuck. Point. Peter's still around? Yeah, Peter's still around. Uh, well, yeah, after properly gaslighting, you think he's going anywhere? <laughs> Jesus. Again, gaslighting is a made up term. <laughs> again, this is. This just sounds like someone dealing with clinical depression, and then all the men around her are just shitty. Oh, God, yeah. So after this, Father Alts uh, told the family to pick her up and take her back home, get her out of the university. And, of course, when she gets home, she then starts tearing up a picture of Jesus. They tried to bring her to church, and she couldn't enter the church grounds. Her legs would just completely stiffen up. She couldn't sleep. Uh, one day on a walk with Peter, she fell to her knees and was unresponsive for 10 minutes. And then after that, she leaped up, said that she was free, and that she saw a vision of the Virgin Mary. Okay. So, in this dream of hers, she believes that the Virgin Mary is telling her that she is having penance for lost souls. 
And she has a choice to either keep suffering for the souls of others to save them. <laughs> or fucking... <laughs> oh, man, I see where that's going. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or or she could be free of, like, all these afflictions. <laughs> She's and, like, free, please! No, Fuck them! <laughs> no, apparently, because of, like, how religious she is, she decided that she wanted to take the penance oh, for all God. these souls because she believed that Revelations was coming. And that she needed to save as many souls as possible. Dog, you suffered enough. Tap out. Yeah. <laughs> fucking, you've had fucking every fucking illness that you could think of. You had the German measles. Tap out. Yeah. Be like, no, let Peter fucking take his whack at it. It's his turn. Fuck. Yeah, she said that she had two weeks of being free, and then she would go back to, like, things would get oh, bad again. Oh, God. So she went back to the university, and she started becoming really rigid. And she would growl at crosses on the walls. Oh, no. So. I'm not even religious. And I'm walking in the hallway with somebody and they walk past that cross and look at it and go. Rrr. I'm like, oh, what the yeah, fuck? If I, if I see anyone growling at anything. <laughs> right. I was like, what's wrong with so you? So after a couple weeks of this, Peter then took her back home. And then Father Alt asked to do a minor exorcism. So apparently there are different types of exorcisms. We talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's so, so what he what he did was a minor rite. Yeah. yeah, it was a minor rite. So and it's used on someone who's not supposed to be fully possessed, but yeah. surrounded by negative demonic. It's energy. the Kmart of exorcisms. Yeah. It's often used to prepare people for baptism. Yep, and he got his permission, and so they did the first exorcism in August of seventy five. Um, afterwards, she grew completely out of control. Uh, she would only get like two hours of sleep a night. She would cry for mercy from Jesus for hours every day. Um, she would get up and down off her knees and to the point where they were swollen and bruised Jesus. and like just fucked up. Um, she would remain rigid for days. She would hardly eat or drink. She started eating insects like spiders High and protein. bugs around. Fucking... Oh uh, my God. You imagine just watching somebody snatch a spider up off the floor and eat it? Yep. But fucking Peter's still around? Uh, she would urinate on the floor. And Peter's not it. around anymore. Peter, Peter's peter gone. Peter's <laughs> got to be gone, right? Bear Grylls would be proud. <laughs> oh, she destroyed any religious object that was in the house that she would walk by. So then another priest was called in um, to investigate her. This was a father rent. And... Uh, she we would have a normal conversation, and then she would go into like a trance, and she would speak in a lower tone and say that she was Judas, just like Paris oh, Hilton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then she would snap out of it and just start holding a normal conversation again. The priest said at that point she was possessed. So then no they requested shit. to do a major exorcism, and the superior actually granted him permission for this, but said it had to be done under the utmost secrecy. Like, no one could know that they were going to exercise this girl. Oh, it's never good when the church wants to keep something a secret. So, the first session happened in September, and they had the priests, the family, two friends, and Peter. God damn it, Peter is committed. Yeah, all in the same room of this exorcism, right? When they started the rite, she instantly became violent. They had to, so the, they had to have one priest and Peter, like, hold her down. As Father Rince did the ritual. The whole time, Peter's just like, I told you guys I'm super hot. There's something wrong with her. Something wrong with her. I'm a catch. <laughs> <laughs> the session lasted three and a half hours. Fucking demons just yelling, you're a five. You're a five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. During all this, apparently she starts speaking in different voices. And the voices that they claimed that she was speaking as were Judas, Lucifer, Nero, as an Emperor Nero of Rome. Jeez. Cain, as in Cain and Abel. Uh, Hitler. Oh. Uh, and, and Triple H. <laughs> and some priest from the 15th century named Heisman. Which, that apparently was the name that threw Father Alton and Tizzy. Because apparently it was like, there's no way she would know anything about this priest. Because apparently it was someone who was excommunicated from the church. For doing some things. Um, while this was so, then after this, she started talking more and more to the Virgin Mary in her head, and that's when you know she would have uh, 
she would start studying like from different religious figures who would talk about like suffering for the sake of God and doing penance for other people. And so she got really heavy into this stuff. She was still attending school during all this. Well, that sounds safe for everybody and herself. Yeah. And get this, because this, because she kept showing symptoms, they kept doing more exorcisms. Well, yeah, you got like 10 of them in there. You got to start with the big ones. You got to try to get flush Hitler out of there first and then move on to the next one. So over a period of several months, as they would do it, the demonic voices would start to go away. And so she would just start howling and growling through these rites. And her physical health declined from lack of eating, physical torment, lack of sleep. Um, in fact... Through this uh, encounters, I'll have a little snippet. They actually recorded several of these exorcisms. And so we have audio and video of these of these priests doing these rites. So I'll share some of this with y'all. Oh, he asked if she was Judas, and she said no. And of course, someone had to put... I was about to say, did the priest bring the soundtrack? <laughs> no, someone's trying to make it more dramatic. Oh, she sounded like a door opening really slow in a shitty house there for a second. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is actually a historical document of the first victim of the Taco Bell. <laughs> is this Judas? No. Taquito Taco Bell. <laughs> Five layer beefy burrito. <laughs> <laughs> well, the United States Paranormal Podcast, we appreciate y'all continuing to listen. <laughs> Taco Bell sponsor us. <laughs> yeah, that was a clip from uh, from one of her exorcisms. Yeah. So again, while she's going through all this, uh, you know, like I said, she stopped eating. She was just physically getting tormented and having like a sleep. She finally said she was done with doctors and that she was only going to pray for her health and she would not get any medical attention anymore. Mm, right. Drop the ball on that one. Uh, she's 23 at this time. Um, she's still going to school. She's writing her thesis so she can gradu- graduate. And as she's getting closer and closer to graduating, Father Alt said that she could no longer attend school and moved her to a parish house uh, where, like, on the church grounds where he lived so then that he could be able to help her at any time. Ah, fuck that. That girl put in all that work just to have a fucking priest fucking just stop her. I'm like, no, you need to live where I can constantly fucking harass you instead of finishing the fucking years and years and years of dedicated work you put towards your fucking... Well, you know, they can't have a woman becoming independent. Yeah, fuck. So she began... When she moved in, she began to moan and scream for hours. She didn't eat. She stayed at the house for a total of a week before they moved her back out. After this, she started having periods of violence and self-harm. And in periods of normalcy. But when she would go through her dark spells, she would punch herself, bite herself. She would slam her head against the walls and objects, sometimes for hours. Jesus. It got so bad, like, her left eye was swollen shut because of how, like, how hard she was hitting herself. Jeez. All right. So, uh... During one of the exorcisms that were going on during this time, Dr. Roth attended one of them. And he and Dr. Our Father Alts claimed that that Dr. Roth was like, there is no uh, there's no shot that can help with possession. No and, shit. Yeah. And so he, they said he was just there to observe and he didn't help in any way. Uh, and during and while this is going on, she's dictating to her mother and sister her thesis so she can hopefully graduate. 
And then one day she was running a very high fever and they did another long exorcism. And the next morning she died. Uh, Fuck. During a total, during a period of nine months, they did over 67 of these exorcisms on her. Like ranging anywhere from like two to four hours. And depending on the person doing the exorcism, that shit can be absolutely fucking brutal. Mm -hmm. So they contacted uh, Father Alts, who got uh, Dr. Roth to come back, the one who observed the exorcism to confirm her death. And he didn't bring the correct paperwork for, for it because he would have put she died of natural causes. Because he didn't bring the paperwork, someone else ended up doing the final autopsy and said there is no way she died of natural causes. She was 68 pounds when she died. Jesus. Fuck. So a criminal investigation was performed to see if she died of negligence and malnutrition. And, of course, this got in the media. The district attorneys started going after him, saying that this was like medieval acts of cruelty. Yeah. Because... It obviously was. This was the biggest court trial in Germany since the Nuremberg trials. Oof. Like, that's how big it was. Uh, so they, so the lawsuit was against Father Alts, Father uh, Rentz, the one who actually performed the exorcism, and the parents. Yeah, because like it seems like anytime this girl tried to get back to normal, they'd fucking drag her fucking kicking and screaming away and try to keep her away from the public so they go back to doing their fucking buku nuts religious shit on her while they were getting the court trial going a nun claimed that they needed to exhume the body to show that she was being bled that this was done by as an act of god and that her body wasn't being decayed the family permitted it and they exhumed her corpse and of course they showed, yeah, her body was showing natural decay and corruption. Well, yeah, and probably quicker than normal, too, because she was already malnourished. She was already yeah. skin and bone, so there's not a lot for it to work through. Mm-hmm. So it went to court, and, of course, the prosecution was like, what, we're basically sh- trying to show that, you know, if she had medical attention, she would have probably lived. They, The prosecution got a uh, psychiatrist on there to talk about it, and he went over it, and he said, uh, talked about Father Alts having the uh, schizophrenia, and how he was obviously delusional, and that's why he got he was brought in, uh, why he took an interest in it. And then he, he talked about because the reason why she showed these signs of progression was because it was her own hallucinations from her religious studies and everything she went through and all the stuff she was reading up on and what people were telling her. She believed that this was an act of God repentance and that it just fed into Well, yeah, it also sounded like she, was, she had clinical depression and was also probably schizophrenic herself. Oh, yeah. It was, so he had a uh, schizophrenic trying to fix a schizophrenic. Yep, and they were saying it was a psychogenic psychosis and that everyone just kept on feeding Feeding into into it. it. He said that if he was ever involved in it, of course, he would have tranquilized her, force-fed her, and gave her electroshock therapy. That was the truth. Two of those things are great. The third one, (laughs) not so much. But back then, they were probably like, yes, that's good. Yeah, but... Yeah, no, that's a, uh, let's not shock people's noodles. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the defense, on the other hand, the Catholic Church was like, nope, we didn't sanction this. We're back. Oh, absolutely. This. They took a wide yard from oh, this. Absolutely. The Catholic Church will fucking drop you like a hot uh-huh. fucking pot the moment it gets, especially in the fucking mid 70s. They're like, yeah, we, uh, uh, no. And like, well, let's just check your records. We had a basement flood. Those records aren't there no more. Yeah, no. So it's funny. So the defense, the, they decide, you know what? They got their doctor. We'll get our own doctor. And they wrote a 123 page report on everything, trying to prove that the possession was real and that what they did was ethical and that they were doing the best they could to help her. Unfortunately, the doctors who they got, who actually agreed to do this, because they couldn't find anyone. So they finally got someone, and he was like, no, we support his opinion. Y'all are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. You finally thought you got you a W. This guy's going to come in. He's going to be on our side. He gets there and he looks at the paperwork. And, hmm. Yeah, no, this is fucked. This is fucked. <laughs> we paid you. I know, but what? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, they lost the trial. They were given criminal charges. And um, the parents didn't receive a punishment. 
Of course. Because they because the courts ruled that losing a daughter was punishment enough. The two fathers... The, what the fuck? Oh, get this. No, the two priests received hefty fines and about uh, two years of probation. No tracks. Hey, it is Germany. They've done worse. They were like, oh, that's God fine. God damn it. <laughs> it's what, the 70s, the 80s? Yeah, this is 70s. This is like 78 yeah. when, the, when the trial finally ended. Holy fuck. Yeah. Don't feel good about that one. No, no. I believe, like I said, said it before, said it again, we'll say it a thousand times. I believe in the paranormal. But I also believe in shitty fucking people. Yep. Uh, that uh, hide behind things like religion and other things to get away with fucking horrible stuff. Like I said, she had a history of like all of these diseases and stuff. Well, yeah, but any lost- of these fevers could have start, could have done something in her brain that co- that caused all the psychosis. And of course, because she was raised in such a religious background, like she was flooded and inundated with it, she just created these delusions. Well, not to mention, on top of that, you had a fucking schizophrenic fucking priest trying to fucking solve all her problems when he didn't have his own problems in a fucking headlock. Yep. The fucking hearing voices in head telling me he needs to do this. No, dude, those were voices in your head were just the voices in your fucking head from the fucking clinical issue you fucking have. But yeah, divine intervention. That's fine. Whatever. I fucking, he paid a fine and I'm sure he went back to his life relatively normal. Yeah. Ooh, fucking scariest thing on this planet. Said this before too. The scariest fucking thing to walk this earth is fucking people. On the right side, though, we've gotten a little bit better on what we don't let slide via even if you're religious or not. And but, you know, good Lord. 67 exorcisms. God. Like this is them holding her down and her getting violent. Tying her down with her all fucking 67 pound weighing ass. Probably just have just fucking covered in bruises from being tied down and brought her body probably just tapped out from fucking just being completely depleted at that point it's had no fight left in it yeah well also unfortunately at this time even had this not been the whole religious aspect uh if she were in the hospital it, it might have been, been really great. yeah it probably wouldn't have been great either the only thing difference there would she would had a fucking line into her feeding her yeah oh yeah and would be drugged out of her fucking that was mind. the thing like all the doctors all agreed that yeah it would have been awful but she'd be alive she would be alive yeah she wanna have died there was no from they, there was no there's no winning in that situation for that girl in that time unfortunately there was either she died a horrible death or she lived a fucking gnarly twisted ass life yeah. because like I said back then they would have just fucking kept her drugged up uh, and would let the drugs wear out long enough for them to fucking zap her fucking noodle and then put her right back on a fucking tranquilizer so oof yeah oof wait a minute. this one's ending on a fucking somber ass note uh we're back at it. We're back at cases, everyone. Uh, chiller filler's gone. We're back at it. Woo! Do you yeah. ever bring anything that can make us feel good at the end of it? The last story you did was the freaking pedophile doll. How about next time you come at us with a cryptid that just fucking hugs people and fucking <laughs> saunters back yeah, up? Yeah, bring us something Oh, God, fun. it's Hugfoot. He gave me a nice hug, a pat on the back, told me I'm doing the best I am, and then he walked back off into the fucking woods. Yeah, I was I was down on my luck, and this creature out of nowhere just came in and with six arms gave me a meal and rent for the month. And it's the fucking Oklahoma spare I mean, tire chupacabra. You get a flat, he walks out of the woods <laughs> with the exact right tire you need. And I got you, bud. <laughs> he was scary as fuck looking, but fuck, he got but, that tire on like a pit crew you know in NASCAR. What, have you ever gone. heard anyone being claimed to be possessed by Hitler? No, but that's never a good thing. It's not like Hitler possessed me to fucking do one of his paintings. <laughs> It's not good if yeah. it I mean, have you not been paying attention to <laughs> Kanye West lately? <laughs> good God. Uh, it can never be a nice story. Why don't you do the fucking, next time you come to the table, why don't you do the one that Ashley suggested the first live show, the fucking, was it the squonk or the whatever, the one, oh, the one yeah, that just the fucking, the one that just fucking dissolves into its own puddle of tears. <laughs> squonk never did anybody dirty, Brandon. See, I feel like Brandon's going to make that one really depressing too. <laughs> Do the hoop snake. <laughs> God damn it. I fucking, I'd rather the sad stories than the fucking hoop snake. <laughs> Get it, God. 
Oh, man. Uh, okay, I feel like I need to pivot into something that's a little bit better before we go to, so the, our, our fucking listeners don't fucking drive off the on-ramp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Anybody watch Wednesday? Go watch Wednesday. It's a great show. I haven't finished it yet. It's good. Uh, it'll make you feel invested in a severed hand. Uh, just uh, go watch Wednesday. Uh, hug a relative. Uh, I don't know. Go eat Taco Bell. I don't know. Whatever makes you happy, go do it. Fuck. I'm gonna have to go fucking go find something to make me happy now. That was fucking rough. Uh, but now you have a point of reference where whenever you think you have it bad, just think of her and be like, damn. I can think of any of your fucking stories you've told and it fucking give me a fucking spot of life to be like, yeah, it's not so bad. I could be the fucking Smurl dad that got fucking diddled on the couch by the scary demon lady, or... Or I could be the dog that got twisted into a fucking Rubik's Cube and whipped at the wall, or... Any of these things that Brandon sold, and I could just feel a little bit better about myself. Just do something fun! <laughs> we can talk about cryptids! Let's go back to talk about aliens! Butt stuff's always funny! <laughs> Oh, this has been the United States of Paranormal. <laughs> Logan. It's been Matt. Bose. Fucking good luck and Godspeed, listeners. <laughs> good night. <laughs> good God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, this is Matt from the United States of Paranormal. We forgot to plug anything. Oh this yeah, episode. no, tap back in. All right, yep, all right. Up, oh, up, oh, left a little prematurely there. Uh, He's used to saying that. Uh, <clears throat> make sure to check out uh, our uh, merch store and all around website, the United States of Paranormal dot com, where you can check out all of our stuff for sale, bios on us, links to other things like the other Golden Mojo uh, Entertainment uh, podcast. We got the Call Guys, Murder Nerds, Indiana Chiefs fans, Golden Image. And eventually the Skywalker's gonna make something. Eventually. Get at it, fucking Skylar. Holy yeah. shit. We have we have a little something for everybody with, with Indiana Chiefs fan. If you like sports, uh, and you either want to be mad or uh want to support the Indiana Chiefs, that's a great oh, podcast well, for you to listen all, to. The Indiana, it's not that's the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, oh. the Indiana <laughs> Chiefs is the name of the podcast. It's just Indiana people that support and the Chiefs. I don't no, follow I'm sports. just happy I knew it was a sports ball team. Yeah, sports ball if if you like music. Then there is the uh, what is it golden? Yeah, golden image. Uh, golden image podcast talks about well, it's mu- it's it's a little bit of two things because like we said uh, on off weeks, it is vintage golden image radio stuff where they do talk about music with local mm-hmm. bands that took uh, place back when MySpace was still prominent. Uh, and then on the other weeks, it's reviews of stuff like stuff to do in Indiana around the Etna Green area or the or a little bit wider spread every now and then. And then we've got the Mere Nerds, uh, where you've got uh, our other host, uh, Alicia, and, and her host, Trashley, and Golden Jay, where they talk about uh, all sorts of murders and whatnot, sometimes killer animals, sometimes animals that save people's lives. You know, if you got done with this episode and you feel bad and you want to continue to feel bad, go go watch some true crime. Yeah. Uh, and then you got the call guys, who we want to thank you because uh, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Colton and Gunner constantly send us donations because they love us so much and they want to keep this show running. They uh, literally, we have to ignore calls from them because they're always calling us, trying to tell us that we're doing such a good job and they love us and they want us to come back on their show. I'm like, listen, guys, just dial it back a little bit. We know you're fans. We've seen your shirts. We get the pictures you send us all the time. Number one fan. We get it. Yeah, they somehow got my home address and they just keep, they send me, I get a letter from them. Every single day. Fuck, I wish I'd get a letter. I keep getting locks of fucking Colton's hair in the mail, and it's getting a little weird. But yeah, go check out them. Uh, they're basically a pop culture podcast where they do top list of like top 20, 20 top 2000s movies. Where that, Where's that cut off? Because are they do like, if you do top 2000s, do you break it down to like 2000, 2010? Then like. I'd assume so. Uh, they also have their uh, top 10 movies to reminisce about Matt and Logan, too. Yeah, which is weird, too. Yeah, yeah it was all yeah. weird, like, rom-com things that said reminded them of us, which is a little strange. Uh, but, yeah, we appreciate the fans out there. Uh, just dial it back a little bit. Bring it, Take it back from the 17 you're at and bring it back to, like, a soft five. Soft five. <laughs> and uh, what else? Have we got them all? That was it? That was all of them? Yeah. 
Go check out merch. Yeah. Go check out other podcasts. Uh, if you want to check out podcasts, go check out the Werewolf Ambulance. I love that podcast. It's a podcast where they uh, watch old, well, they just watch horror movies and then they just kind of like talk about it. Oh, that's cool. I love the Werewolf Ambulance. It's a good podcast. Yeah, I think that's it. That's what we got. That's a little bit of lighter note there. I feel a little bit better. Yeah. My, my soul doesn't feel as dirty. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Back. Look, Yet I'm again, this you. has been Logan. It's been Matt. Buzz. We're getting the fuck out of here. Good night. <laughs> Keep it spooky. To support other Golden Mojo Entertainment Productions, check out Golden Image Podcast, The Call Guys, and Murd Nerds wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts. To see photos and find new episodes of the United States of Paranormal, follow us on our social media, Twitter at T-U-S-O-P-P-O-D, or Instagram at the United States of Paranormal, and Facebook the United States of Paranormal. If you have a place that you'd like us to look into or would like to share your spooky story that we can read on the air, please email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com.